Hello, welcome to exercise three in my before and after challenge. This week, it's all about aperture and depth of field. Hello, welcome to In Studio. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. I hope you're enjoying my before and after challenges. This is week three. I've certainly been enjoying seeing the images that you've been creating. Uh, this is week three and today we're looking at aperture and depth of field and how we can use that to affect our compositions. I've come down to uh, Vernon Park and uh, I've dropped in quite lucky actually. I've found this, well, this sort of damaged tree that happens to be in blossom and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create an image of just the blossom on the end of the tree but with the bandstand in the background and I want to do this to show how aperture can really change the image that we create so first of all get your camera into aperture priority mode that's AV on the main dial and I want you to select the widest aperture that's the smallest F number and set your lens to be about 100 millimeters if you can and find a subject that will more or less fill the frame but with something interesting behind as I've got here so I'm going to photograph the blossom but with the uh, uh, the bandstand behind it and you can see from that image that the blossom is sharp that's the item I focused on but the bandstand behind it is very much out of focus it's a blur in the background you might just be able to make out that triangular shape of the roof now if I go all the way up to f22 which is the smallest aperture that I can achieve on this uh, uh, this camera or with this lens I should say and take the same shot again we'll see what difference that makes to the image again I'm still going to be focusing on the blossom so let's take that shot and you can see there now that the uh, the bandstand in the background is much much more in focus and much more visible it's not perfectly sharp it's it is a long way away from the subject I'm photographing so what happens if we pick a mid value how about f11 or f8 well I'm gonna go to f8 and take the shot again you'll notice with that that again the blossom is still sharp but the uh, the bandstand is not as sharp as it was and not as blurred as it was it's that mid-tone it's a little bit mediocre in terms of it's neither one thing nor the other however if you zoom in and depending on your lens you might notice something else that's different between those shots your lens is likely to be at its sharpest round about f8 so close as I zoom in close on that blossom let's compare how sharp it is on the at f8 compared to how sharp it is at f4 and how sharp it is at f uh, f22 so the lessons to take away from this is use your aperture to control your depth of field the uh, wider the aperture in other words, the smaller the f number the shallower the depth of field the smaller the aperture the um, the, the larger the number the larger the depth of field but where you don't need to worry about your depth of field go for something like f8 because your lens will be at its sharpest there so your task this week is to go through that exercise yourself with your own lens and this time it's not just about creating the images it's about you analyzing the images afterwards have a look at your images zoom right in in whatever software you use to view them right to 100 percent is your foreground subject sharper at f8 than at your widest aperture and your smallest aperture let me know in facebook if it is 
also share the images, the three, the um, uh, your widest aperture, your smallest aperture and your f8 uh, setting on there so that we can see the difference. And you don't need to choose a subject the same as mine, you don't need to go back to the same location you've shot in before, uh, choose your own subject try and keep your lens at about 100 millimeters if you can uh, and then we'll see the effect uh, at its greatest there. Purpose of the exercise really is to help you understand what you get from your lens under particular conditions so that when you are out shooting you can take an informed decision as to whether you want a small aperture or a wide aperture a shallow depth of field or a big depth of field. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video and until then keep making great photos. Bye for now.